if you are joining me today, you are here for the finale, the last video in my series about um, knitting socks. And if you haven't been here before, my name is Kelly Slack. And today we're going to talk about um, socks in other ways. So it's not a top down or a toe up circular sock. Um, if you don't know who I am, uh, I was invited to guest teach by Heather of Pearly Shell Fiber Arts and I am the co-owner of Black Sheet Fiber Emporium with my partner Tina. Um, I have two master's degrees in teaching and I, I just, I really love to teach and um, this has been great because I haven't been able to do my usual fiber festival teaching. Um, I'm a self-published author of two books. Those are Hoppy Feet and Froth and Foam. hundred pairs of socks. I really have. I really have. So while I don't know everything, um, I do, I do know a lot. I know a lot. Um, and again, if you haven't been here before, um, my little video segments are all free because, um, well, because we're sponsoring it with, um, three sponsors. So that's Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, Kelly Slack Designs, and Pearly Shell fiber arts so make sure that you are um, checking out their websites and or going to their social media accounts and following them uh, and you can mm -hmm. find us on Instagram Facebook YouTube and TikTok because we try to make sure that we are um, you know available everywhere just for fun so today um, today is kind of a little chit chat session about how to make socks in other ways because you you don't have to just make socks um, in the round from the top down or from the toe up you there are a lot of other ways and perhaps one of um, the most pioneering people of that um, idea is Cat Bordy who um, unfortunately we lost this year um, super super like creative woman um and and the socks that she has you knit and the different um ways in which you make them it's kind of crazy because she really has you look at it as um you can start anywhere you can start anywhere and knit a sock so of course you can start um in the round and of course top down or in the round and go toe up but if you really want to you can start at the heel or you can start with the side um and if you don't have a copy of her books, um, they are mind-bending. They work. They absolutely work. And they are definitely valid ways to make socks. Um, but it sure does make my brain hurt a little bit um, when I'm trying to wrap my mind around exactly how she made socks. And I, I really feel like this woman must have just um, decided that, hey, <laughs> I was going to... Uh, I was going to figure out a way to knit socks from every angle. It's kind of what I feel like is that um, when you look at it, it's I, I was going to figure out a way to knit socks from every angle. So um, if you knit any of, of her socks from this book, um, she has like these whole diagram and it's a series of diagrams on uh, where you start and where you end up. Um, and and anyway, part of what I think is so interesting about it is that um, your heel then can really be anywhere, right? So those increases and decreases that we talked about that make that heel cup, they can really go anywhere in that general area on a sock. So they don't have to follow all of the rules that I um, kind of laid out for you. I think that's one of the most interesting things about knitting for me it's not as free form as crochet because there are there are more structured rules but I feel like with knitting you have a lot more play in the fabric in terms of how you put your stitches together how you increase how you decrease and where you do that so that you have um, kind of this blossoming of, of ideas within a framework and and for me those are kind of the two differences and I love to crochet I have you know I started off crocheting I don't think I said that but I started off crocheting and then switched to knitting um, and I still know how to crochet and occasionally I will break out the hooks and and make something but I do love my knitting and I do especially love to knit socks 
Um, another, another way that you can knit socks is you can actually knit socks flat. You can absolutely knit socks flat and you can do that on straights or circulars. Knit your socks flat. There's several patterns out there and you can seam your socks. If you're really good at seaming, um, this is not an issue at all. And if you're not as good at seaming, it might be a little more of an issue because you'll have more of a rub point. But there's no, there's no reason you can't. There's no reason that you can't do that. And that's part of, also part of what I wanted to talk about today was that um, there are so many ways to knit. And there are so many patterns out there. But there are also so many things that you might like to change about them. Don't be afraid of changing a pattern. Don't be afraid of trying something new. If it doesn't work, you've gained knowledge. It's not a failure, it's a gaining of knowledge. That's how I look at it. And, and you know, I might joke that I fail a lot, because I do. I try things and they, they don't work out. But for every failure, I learn something. I've gained knowledge. I understand a little bit better what I'm doing. So the next time that I do it, Maybe I'll be successful. I'm not always successful, but maybe I'll be successful. So I wanted to talk about a cat, especially thinking of different ways to knit socks that you didn't have to do it the way that everybody else told you to, that, that you don't have to fit a mold, right? That's one of the most important things I think you can take away from knitting and from this little, you know, series is that if you don't like a heel, in a pattern. You don't have to knit that heel. You don't have to knit the band heel. You don't have to do a German heel. You don't have to do a short row heel. You don't even have to do an afterthought heel. You can knit the heel that works best for you, the one that you like best. And you can do that in any pattern because where there's a will, there's a way and it can be done. You just have to commit yourself to it. Um, and I think that's a really freeing idea is that I don't have to knit it exactly the way that the designer says. And, and I am a designer and I'm giving you permission, absolutely, if you feel you need it, to change my patterns. Change my patterns. Do what you need to do. Take inspiration from them. You know, maybe you buy the pattern, you start knitting it, you realize this isn't really, you know, working with my yarn or maybe I don't like this piece of it. Change it. Change it. For heaven's sake, change it. Make it your own. And, and do with it what you need to do so that it's your knitting journey and it fits your needs. That's my thought. Um, I own a lot of books, um, not as not as many as I probably should, but I do. I own a lot of books, so I, I do own the Cat Bordy book um, that I showed you, and then I also own Socktopus and um, the Knitting Vintage Socks. My umbrella is trying to take off on me. No, no. Uh, what else do I have here? The Vogue Knitting Ultimate Sock Book. Um, here's the. <laughs> I, I am really dedicated to socks. I even own the Knitter's Book of Socks. Um, these were some of my first sock books. Um, sensational and more sensational knitted socks. And I used these books for ideas a lot um, when I was first making socks. Um, I own the Sock Knitting Myth Masterclass. I own Knit Sock Love. I own Folk Socks. I own Sock Innovation. Uh, I have the joy of socks. I mean, I really, really love socks. Favorite socks, um, you know, and bud is always a classic. Anyway, there are, there's so many sock books out there and there's so many patterns out there. And no matter which way you choose to knit a pair of socks, so long as you've learned something and it fits you or your intended recip recipient, then I think you've won and you've succeeded. So I know this is kind of a, an odd video, but um, just go out there and try it. Go out there and experiment. And you know, if you need to make a tiny sock, try out, um, oh, there comes my cat. This is Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. Um, try out, uh, you know, a little keychain sock with some technique that you want to learn and just cast on 20 stitches and go for it. Why not? What are you really going to be out? I mean, it's, it doesn't even take that long to make a tiny keychain sock, right? And it's fun and it's something to use that you can, uh, 
you can try um, a new technique on. Maybe you want to learn how to make a short row heel, or maybe you want to learn how to do that peasant heel. Uh, try a keychain sock, just something small, or make baby socks, or you know, just something, something small, where you can test it before you get into you know a, a bigger adult sock. Or go for it, go for that big adult sock. There's no, I'm not going to hold you back. If that's what you want to do, go for it. I will say that swatching does help quite a bit. And as I talked about yesterday in my care and washing of socks, um, oh, you've got some nice stickers in your coat. Let's take those out. Um, if you make your swatches and you've never used your machine before uh, and you want to try washing your um, washing your hand knit socks or your hand knit items in your washing machine, swatches are a great place to start because you can test a swatch and if something goes wrong then you can adjust it or you'll know, oh I really cannot use this machine, it's going to ruin my hand knits. So swatches are a fabulous thing. They can be used for so many different purposes. It's not just going to teach you something about uh, the yarn that you want to use for your sock. It's also going to teach you, um, you know, it's going to teach you about that yarn, that fiber, the needles that you were using, the, the colors that you chose, uh, whether or not they're going to be color fast. It'll teach you about whether or not the yarn and fiber and needle size that you chose is going to grow in the wash. I mean, there's so many different things that you can learn. You could try new techniques in your swatches too. Just, you know, make little swatches. And it's not like you can't do something. You can always take those swatches and sew them together into a nice pillow or a blanket. There's so many things that you can do. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. And my final sock video was, um, don't let yourself be boxed in just by uh, what a pattern says or what you think you can do or by what you think a sock is supposed to be or how a sock is supposed to be knit. Um, there are side winders that start at the side and flat socks and there's socks that start at the heel and that's great and you can do that. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this sock series and my, my oddly rambling, um, hopefully somewhat inspirational video today on um, why I think it's important that you try new things out and, and don't be too afraid to rip it out and try again. Um, I hope that you're making socks this month and that you are um, really interested in socks like I am because clearly I have a little bit of a sock obsession. Um, if you are up for the challenge, you can always, uh, go follow, um, my YouTube channel or the Black Sheep Fiber Emporium YouTube channel. You can join me on, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays live on the Black Sheep Fiber Emporium page where I just teach random things. Um, and in fact, I think I'm teaching color work on Monday, so we're doing something with color work. And then Wednesday, we're talking more about socks because I, I just can't let go of that sock thing this month. So feel free to uh, join me there. I've had a great time teaching um, everything that I could think of to teach really quickly about socks on the Wool and Fiber Arts group. Uh, and I can't wait to come back and teach you all something again um, in the future. That I think that would be super fun. And I'll work with Heather and, and see what else she thinks might be fun for me to teach. So um, don't forget to say thank you to Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, Curly Shell Fiber Arts, and Kelly's Life Designs. Check out our social media. Um, go check out our website and um, make sure that you take care of yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally, that you keep crafting, that you have a wonderful day. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all on the Waffa group again. Thanks.